It makes a statement. Please remember that. Good morning, Randolph High School. I'm Paul Stephen Stone, creator of Orange Shield. We're here today to launch a program we hope will end bullying in your school. It's called Orange Shield because it relies on each of you to wear the color orange every day. It could be an orange shirt, an orange backpack, or just this orange wristband, which each of you will get at the end of the assembly. Okay, so why wear orange? Why am I standing here today before you looking like a popsicle? We've chosen orange as a sign, a symbol, which, when enough of us wear it, will show bullies they're being watched and that their nasty behavior will not be tolerated. But it will also show the victims of bullying they're not alone. When you wear orange, you're taking a visible stand against bullying and putting all bullies on notice. Let me ask you, how many of you have been bullied, ever? Raise your hand if you have. Don't be afraid, there's no more fear. Well, if you look around, you'll see that it's a pretty common experience. In fact, most of us could probably raise two hands, or three, if you could do that. <clears throat> It's time we said stop. It's time we pulled the plug on bullies. As with my orange, we're going to catch the bully's eye and make a very simple statement. No more fear, no more bullying. Please join your fellow classmates in wearing orange every day. And when you see someone being bullied, report it, please so that every one of you is free to enjoy a richer, safer, and happier life. You don't know who's the next person to be bullied in a world where bullies are let run free. And it could be you, it could be anybody. It's time to wear your orange and tell the bullies, no more fear, no more bullying. Let's repeat that, all of us, with a shout even the deafest bully will hear. No more fear, no more bullying. No more fear, no more bullying. Thank you. Good morning, everybody. Most of you know who I am. Uh, you know, my name is Mr. Dan. I'm the assistant headmaster here at Randolph High School. And I want to thank everybody for giving me the opportunity to speak to you guys for about five minutes. So if I could have your attention and your respect. Right around the age where you guys are right now, I have to do with bullying. Uh, 
And if you need a reminder of that, let us know. Thank you. What's up, guys? <laughs> My name's Taj, as some of you guys know. All right, so here's my story. When I was a kid, I lived in Haiti with my dad and my grandma and two aunts and two uncles and four cousins. And I wasn't the kind of person that just like woke up, got dressed, went to school and was like, get bullied at school. Oh no, that wasn't me. When I woke up and got dressed, I was bullied at home, also at school, but mainly at home because the people that were bullying me were my family, they were my cousins. And I had to walk with two of them to school and home. And I was terrified of crossing the street because I was just like, you could get hit by a car and I could die. And it was just the kind of thing like, of course I was afraid of that, I was young. And right in front of our school, that was the only street we had to cross. So of course, if I was walking behind them, of course, because they were always talking about me, so I didn't want to be next to them. I was going with being all the way behind them, but we'd only come together when we'd cross the street and then go our separate ways. And then one day after school, they decided, I don't want to walk with her. So they got a couple of their friends, and their friends blocked me at the front of the school, and they ran across the street. So I wasn't going across the street. So I let them walk home. And of course, they thought it was pretty funny, but me being left at school, I started crying. I stayed at school till 8 p.m. because nobody noticed that I didn't show up at home. Nobody at school thought anything was weird. Eventually the principal came out because she was going home and she was like, why are you still here? And I'm just like, oh well, my cousins left me at school. I'm not crossing the street. So she was like, oh, I'll give you a ride home. That was very mean of them. And I might have to talk to them about that. I was like, cool. She went to her office to get the keys and my cousins showed back up at the school. Kind of like, Psst, what are you doing here, kind of thing. And I just looked at them because I was just like, why are you all of a sudden back to come and get me? And they started yelling at me and being like, oh, you know, you got us in trouble. You're so stupid. Why didn't you just walk home? You're so worthless, you know, things like that. Of course, you know, they grabbed me and they were like, you're going home, and you know, like, I thought it was like, okay, I guess I have to go home, but I told the principal that she could give me a ride, so I was like, why don't you just let her give me a ride, and I'll see you guys at home. They wouldn't take it, so they dragged me all the way home, and I got in trouble when I got home, because they were like, why are we still in school? And they couldn't understand that I was so afraid to just cross the street. Eventually, a little bit later, I moved down here to Boston-ish. <laughs> and I thought, you know, well, since I'm away from my cousins, things are gonna be better, but I was wrong. <laughs> I guess I was just too different. The names I was called were very vicious, very mean, and just, it hurt so much, and I used to cry, like, every day. And I remember the most common one, it might not seem hurtful, but it was, like, weirdo, freak, bug girl. I know that, like, I was like, okay, well, I guess it's okay, because, I mean, I love bugs, so that's an understandable nickname. And then one kid came up to me, and he was like, oh, no, we don't call you bug girl because you like bugs. We call you bug girl because you're ugly like one. So... I thought it was pretty normal. I mean, I grew up with it, so I was just like, oh, it must be natural. Everybody must get treated this way. But that's not okay. And you guys need to understand that your words have an impact on others. 
Think before you speak. Words can kill. So many people have killed themselves because of how they were treated. And if you don't want something that you said to be remembered by another person, like if it's really mean, don't say it. If you call someone ugly, what if they were just like, oh yeah, you're ugly. Some of you guys may be like, I don't care. But if you're continuously being called that, you're gonna start to believe it. I mean, me, it's still kind of hard for me to look in the mirror in the morning, but I still do it. And I'm just like, you're beautiful. You're not what you were called. You guys really need to understand that your words have an impact. They could hurt a person or they can help them. So use it to help them. I help people every day because I don't want people to be treated the way I was. I don't hurt people. I don't say things that I think might hurt because I don't want to be, well, how I put it, treated or like thought of like my cousins. So use your words in a good way, please. Some of you guys don't care, but you should. Thank you. Good morning. My name is Mrs. Rosen. I'm one of the school social workers in this building. We have three of them, so ladies, um, the speakers or the videos touch you and you want to talk to somebody, please make sure that you seek us out. Um, I want to acknowledge a few people who made this possible. I'm going to do it now for the order to the best of my ability. Headmaster Allen gave us permission to do that. Assistant Headmaster Kinetta was the, the person behind it who built this in this building. <laughs> Stephanie Dome, who participated in the committee that got this thing going. Our Jello Grant, who is our intro person. And also one of the people who got us going, Tyler Jenaton, who was fabulous in speaking. I really want to thank you, Tyler. It's not easy to get up here and tell something about yourself that's very difficult and very personal. So you should realize it took a lot of courage to do that. I'd also like to thank Manny Alamenza, who's also doing our video. I don't know exactly where he is at the moment, but he's doing a video with school. And uh, Paul Stone, who was the initial brains behind this program, the guy that used to the orange in his hands. And also, the video that you just saw, to you who were different, that, we, that video we did in this school like, three years ago, and it won several awards. It's, a, it's, it's been shown around the world, and it's become very popular. It's had many thousands of hits on the website, so you can always go on there and see it if you want. Um, our videographers, Bob Noel of BPI and Pat Walker, who are here today to make a video that we hope we're going to promote that will go to other schools around the state and maybe the country. Mrs. Ward Bailey, who's my co person here. And the GSA, the peer leaders, the Youth Speak, the National Law Society, the Asian Clubs, who have students who are helping us today, and we're hoping to get many more clubs and many more teams involved in this because we want to make this a program that everyone listens to. And so what we're going to do now is as you're leaving, you'll be getting armed for fans. We're going to everyone who had who is bullying and who has been bullying that. They're, they're safer now, and we want to make sure. If you see anything happening, report it. It's not snitching, it's actually protecting. I'd like to replace the word snitching and put the word protecting. And the last thing is, tomorrow we're doing all three lunches. Those groups are going to help me, who will also be videoed. We're going to have these banners that you'll see, you see up here that are going to be um, signed by everybody in the school, everybody. And they're going to be put up. So um, at this point, I think we're going to uh, let everyone go through these two doors where you're going to be getting wristbands. Just give a minute to the students who have to get the wristbands so they can hand them out, okay? And I want to thank you for being a fabulous audience. Thank you very, very much.
Get one more. Don't worry about it. Don't worry about it. Here's a sheet. Yeah, well, I mean, it's up to you, but I don't even like having to get up here. <laughs> I don't like getting up. Well, you did a great job. Alright, so 826.